All right, well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and you are here to witness the 2013 Maserati Gran Turismo convertible. And this vehicle is brought to you by Anchor Auto Outlet of Cary, Raleigh, North Carolina. So without further ado, let's get right into this little review here. If you want to check out this vehicle, you can hit up their website. It is quite interesting to per peruse their website because they just got like a Bentley in, you know, a 2015 Bentley and, uh, you know, some other just random things. So if you're interested in any of these vehicles, you can check them out. But please make sure to get a warranty. That is uh, the only thing I have to say to you. Uh, <laughs> So with that established, I'll put all their information in the description box below. So let's get into this. The 2013 uh, Gran Turismo. Why do I want to review this car? Because I have always <laughs> loved this car. I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's always a little car I was uh, interested in. I always looked it up. I knew it wasn't ever the best car in the world. I, I knew that. And uh, currently right now I have the 2020 LC500. So this is also going to be a little comparison video with that car to see, you know, what this has to offer. I've already driven a Ghibli. That wasn't exactly the highest quality automobile I've ever been in. You know, I'll talk about this more in the interior segment, but this is by far the highest quality Maserati I've ever experienced. And uh, this is really solid, even with 34,000 miles. So I drove the Ghibli. I love the way it drove. I want to see what the best that Maserati has to offer. So this thing rocking that 4.7 liter V8, right? Produces, you know, it's naturally aspirated, produces like 454 horsepower and about 384 pounds feet of torque so actually lower numbers than the lc and it weighs about the same about 4400 pounds in this uh convertible trim here you can tell just how good the chassis is in this vehicle this car even for like 2020 it's like the exact same it's been the same for like over a decade now and <laughs> That's kind of cool, you know, the people who buy this thing, new, used, whatever, I mean, it's all the same and it has unbelievable levels of prestige associated with the Maserati brand, unlike Lexus, I guess. But, you know, it's an Italian supercar thing. I think this is cooler than that Ferrari California, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think this car has more presence than that vehicle does. I just love the shape. This is just a timeless shape. So like, that's why you can buy this thing used again with a warranty, of course, and you can just enjoy just the unbelievable prestige of this thing. That's kind of why I've always loved it. This, this shape, I mean, certain cars, man, it's just an emotional thing. You just fall in love with it, you know, kind of like the LC 500, you know, it's just kind of a more reliable, like, you know, Lexus take on pretty much what this car is, right? Obviously, I drove this around with the top down a little bit, and it was a pretty extraordinary experience. You sit low to this car, but it's like really easy to get in and out of. Brakes, you do have to get into them a little bit more, but everything is extremely progressive. This car is massive, by the way. It's like 192 inches long or 194 inches long, something like that. It's like the size of like a mid-size luxury sedan, basically. What that helps out with is just the overall ride quality of this car this car is riding pretty good i'm about to go over some really bad bumps in a bit here but uh as of right now this is doing a really good job coping it's really easy to see out of this car that's not an issue whatsoever being an italian car you know these things are all about uh what do you call it the good old-fashioned emotions and stuff like that i've recently driven cars like the c8 corvette and uh you know some other performance oriented vehicles This car is, um, I do think this is definitely slower than the LC500, but again, this naturally aspirated V8, this is always gonna be a treat. This is always gonna be fun to ring out. It's just progressive. It's just far superior than any sort of like, you know, turbocharged motor. I prefer this a lot more. This is just uh, pretty astonishing. This is the sport trim model, by the way. I don't think this chassis is as nice as the LC500 either, but it's still very good. So far driving this car, you know, I, I'm surprised. I thought the uh, exhaust would, would be a little bit, you know, louder, a little bit crackly and poppy and all that stuff, but it's actually really not. It's a really smooth tone to this engine. There's actually not too much drama with it, but I will say this, I feel a sense of connection to this. I do feel like a sense of emotion to it, uh, similar to the LC500, not, not to that level, but there is something here more so than that C8 Corvette. And again, I'm not here to bash on the C8. I'm just saying that th these are the honest things 
that I'm feeling with this vehicle. I really do like gripping onto the steering wheel. Everything about the uh, seating position is great. You can really be a big boy and uh, really fit in here as well. This is a car made for big people too. Steering feel is excellent. I actually believe this is like a hydraulic steering rack as well. And yeah, over some of these like really bad bumps, this is doing a great job. Very comfortable car. So you put this bad boy in uh, sport mode. Nothing really showing up on the dash to let me know that I am in sport mode, but I'm going to take the car's word for it because I did just press the button. Hopefully it didn't disengage, but uh, let me see. Let me take this trash control off too. Okay, that, that light came on. Trash control is off. All right. Okay, hopefully stability is off too, but we'll see. This car, you know, it's naturally aspirated and doesn't have like a ridiculous amount of power, like six, 700 horsepower. So there's no real wheel spin. It does actually just put all the power down. So, so far it's been a very easy car. It's been very neutral. Big bump there and uh, soaked it up pretty well. Everything about this is like gradual progression. You know, you have to like kind of get into everything. There's not like a level of immediacy, like right off the bat, you do kind of have to like, you know, get into the throttle, you have to get into the brakes and all that good stuff. And these paddles are massive. They're like plastic. <laughs> I think the newer ones do use like a metal paddle shifter, but like uh, these plastic ones, they're, they're massive and they're not mounted to the steering wheel. They're just actually like on the column. Let's, uh, let's see what we have here. First gear start, we do have a little minivan in front of us. Rear window can be a bit hard to see out of. Again, this is the convertible model and um, just kick me out of a manual mode right there. Okay, but yeah, the, the convertible is a little bit more difficult to see out of, but uh, for the most part, I think the side view mirrors do a great job. Paddles react extremely well. Yeah, these paddles are doing an absolutely excellent job of uh, shifting both downshifts and upshifts. This, this thing has a very long nose, so you do have to be cognizant of that. I think you can have a lot of fun with this car. It is slower than the LC, but like in terms of like speed limit driving, this is a ton of fun. It has a ton of character as well and prestige. This thing is not ready to get the best fuel economy in the world. I think it's like 15 city, 21 highway or something like that. So that is another thing I'd be cognizant about. You know, it's not like the newest engines, more so of an old school engine. It's still an aluminum block, but. Taking this little turn here. Let's see what this bad boy has to offer. Yeah, this thing, it's really hard to get this vehicle unsettled. Yeah, really easy car to drive. I mean, it's so easy. That's another byproduct of having this uh, longer wheelbase. It's just far too easy to get uh, sideways and all that good stuff. Again, you had to get into that brake pedal to feel that pressure coming in, that bite. Steering definitely does uh, tighten up here in the, uh, the sport mode, but you know, for the most part, this is by far the most refined Maserati ever. This is like one of the quieter ones. The more refined one, you, you, you can do a lot of miles in this car. Like the seats have a decent amount of comfort in it. It's a lot of fun out on the street. You can push it and it won't really go out. But when you really, really act stupid with it, like you have everything off, you have trash control off and you really just peg it in like first gear you can get it sideways and it will just, uh, you can easily just bring it back because it's so long and you can easily feel what this car is doing at all times. Very communicative car. It's not like some of these uh, other vehicles, you know, not like a Mustang where you don't feel anything like, um, you don't really know what's going on. This car is, this car is quiet, it's composed. There's not an insane amount of like, you know, creaks and rattles <laughs> in this car either. Like that's kind of the quality that I was referring to you guys about compared to to something like the Ghibli, you know, this is by far like the most superior Italian product that I've ever experienced. So even with this many miles, I'm very pleased to report this is a solid car, fun to drive. I do appreciate it a lot. Not a ridiculous amount of road noise either. So for what this is again, um, yeah, you can do a lot of miles in this car. So with that established, let's kind of talk about this interior a little bit. So the interior, the seats have aged extremely well. You know, these leather seats, that's another big advantage. They actually look good too. 
and you can definitely sit in this and just do hella miles in this thing. That's not even a remotely an issue whatsoever. So that's another great thing. The steering wheel is like the perfect size, nice to grip onto. I wish the Maserati logo is a little bit big, uh, bigger, you know, it looks a little bit inadequate here in the middle, but uh, no worries though, you're still wh uh, whipping that Roddy around. The door panels, you know, you, you touch up against everything in this and like, you know, there's a few like, you know, you can tell there's some like, you know, cheaper plastics and stuff being used, but for the most part, it's been held put together extremely well. Like you really had to press up against anything to hear like a creaking sound. But for the most part, this is really good. I, I expected this thing to be a complete rattle box with this type of mileage, but I, I consider me impressed with this thing. You do have one touch automatic windows just for the driver's side only, the passenger side and all that, uh, and the little rear quarter windows, that those are not one touch up and down, which is uh, a little perplexing to me, but whatever. But again, all the little door handles, everything, they're just so solid. Like, I don't know how that's possible, but okay. All the little uh, buttons and switches, they're in a slightly different location than what you would expect, but um, you can get used to this car pretty easily. And again, a lot of adjustability in this car. You can easily fit very large people in here. You might even be able to fit some people in the rear, like some smaller people. I doubt I would fit, but uh, you definitely do have space for like, you know, maybe a five foot two person, I don't know. Because it's kind of like an older car, it's kind of got like that old school vibe to it. Not super old, but you know, kind of like an earlier 2000s car, you know, it has a traditional gear selection thing right here. Those are all little great touches. It does have a little infotainment screen. However, it, it's not like that uh, FCA infotainment. This is kind of like that old school. I have no idea what this is. A little cumbersome to use. I'm not really too sure what's going on here, but there is a screen there, and uh, I guess the audio system isn't half bad for the age of this car. You know, I don't really mind that too, too bad. Uh, there is a dial pad to uh, call people, which is interesting. You have your little Maserati clock, which is always a great little touch. I always like seeing a little clock in the uh, in the luxury cars here. I mean, I am surprised at how quiet this car is. I mean, this is quieter than that C8 was. That's kind of shocking to me, but uh, yeah, I guess you know, Grand Tour, you know, it's living up to its name, that's for sure. Good weight to the steering, by the way. I like that a lot. Very natural, though. Yeah, got two little cup holders. You know, the center armrest area. You know, not the not the biggest, but it's it's pretty decent for what it is. Feels some roll. And again, if you got the uh, coupe version of this exact same car, it would be a little bit more solid, actually. So, convertible version always uh, loses some. Uh, rigidity in the chassis, but uh, you know, overall, this is still coping up a lot better than some other sports cars I've been in. All right, sorry, I keep getting distracted, but yeah, everything is put together pretty nicely. There's a lot of buttons here, miscellaneous stuff. I do like how the climate control is completely separated from the screen here, which is great. That does look a tad bit cheap, but I'm just saying it, at least it's completely separated, which is a pretty good thing glove box is pretty much entirely taken up by the uh the manual books in this vehicle trunk is very small in this car you can't really put much of anything in here again this is the convertible and it's going to have the absolute smallest trunk ever because that top is going to take up a lot of space you know they had to partition a little part out to uh, put that little top back so uh, again the coupe would be a little bit more practical but let's be honest you know how are you going to be driving this car, you know, top down, you know, whipping that Maserati badge around, you know what I'm saying? And for that purpose, this car is phenomenal. This is just such a, the, the swagger of this car is pretty much untouched. I mean, even till this day, there are people breaking their necks to look at this thing. This design has been out forever, but people know what this badge is. And let's be honest, for a lot of people in the luxury car market, they are looking for something different. They want to stand out. They don't want to have the typical 911 or the typical BMW. This is just a cool car that, I get it, it's not the best performance car in the world, but you have to admit, for the street driving, this is much like the LC500. You feel an emotion, you feel an attachment to this car, and it's just practical for just everyday use in terms of how comfortable it is, in terms of the way the naturally aspirated power comes on. It just builds progressively. It's beautiful to ring this motor out. And this steering feel, this kind of hydraulic-ish steering feel, you're not gonna really get this in a lot of the newer cars. So when everything is going digital, you know, it's great that you can get like this new-ish car for this type of price and uh, you know look this good while doing it but again please be sure to get that warranty that pretty much sums up this review again please check out anchor auto outlets website they are the people who are housing this uh 
very clean 2013 Maserati, but they also have a ton of other vehicles in their inventory. So if you wanna check that out, please, again, view their website, maybe let me know what car I should review next here. So again, thank you for watching, take care, and goodbye.